So hi, I'm Jamie Pitchforth, Head of Strategic Business at Juniper here in the UK. Today I'm in conversation with Alex Israel, the Principal Architect for the University of Plymouth. Nice to meet you, Alex. Nice to see you, Jamie. So tell us a little bit about the university. The university is based in the city centre of Plymouth. Uh, we've got about 18,500 students uh, on campus, about 2,500, 3,000 staff. Um, and then we also look after 2,000 on-campus halls of residence bedrooms. So you started your journey with Juniper about 12 months ago. So let's just jump back to the very beginning of that and selection criteria. What, what was important to you when you were out looking at the market, deciding which vendor you were going to strategically align with? So our legacy network was very traditional based um, and it was it operated well as a network, but it didn't integrate and offer many added benefits. What was really keen for us as we joined a digital strategy was to firstly offer a really good experience to staff and students in connectivity, allow us to say yes more than no and get in those devices online, but then also to offer more to the wider IT department, um, look to integrate with other products that we use and give more feedback. You know, ev everything connects and relies on the network. It is that first layer, but it needs to do more these days than it currently used to. And how have you found the difference in terms of your legacy network and the new network? What have been the real key differences between where you were and where you are now? The, the differences are the analytics and the information that we now have of people connected to that new network. We're still in our journey. We've got a lot of Juniper kit in, but we've still got the legacy network there. When problems are reported on the legacy network, it's very difficult to identify problems, um, find solutions, but when we find, not that there are very many on a Juniper network, that we've got that information there. The MIST platform, the power of the cloud, the SDN network allows us to, to do more and find out problems. Um, the automatic packet captures are fantastic for us. Um, and that information is just there and readily available to use. So tell us about the selection criteria. So when we made the decision to refresh and not just stick traditional, we we evaluated the market, we looked at Gartner, we looked at who was doing really well in the market, and then we, we decided on a proof of concept. Um, so we got Juniper in, uh, we looked at wireless first, but we were really impressed with what was on offer wireless-wise. Mm -hmm. um, so we quickly expanded that into wired um, and were equally impressed. Um, so we're able to move forward with that. Um, as a result from that, we've looked at uh, the Wi-Fi 6E um, APs, the AP45s, yeah. um, and in terms of switches, uh, we've got the EX4650s in our core and service blocks, and then we've got for access layer and distribution, we're in the EX4400 family completely, uh, the new 24Xs, um, and then the standard one gig and then the multi gigabit ones. Um, and I think having gone through that journey, any university looking at any kind of refresh, I think it was so easy with Juniper, I'd, I'd highly recommend doing a proof of concept. Uh, I don't know if you're aware, but Juniper has a global success rate of 96% of people who POC actually then turn and, and invest and, and move forward with our technology. So some serious numbers, and I think POC is absolutely critical to anyone um, interested in our technology. And how about moving from your traditional three-tier network to this new fabric network, so the removal of some of those legacy technologies? Yeah, so the canvas fabric is really great for us, and, and the templates, as you say, the, the network's very different now. Um, we work on the same technology, we can push everything out to the edge, the core and service block of our network, are where we connect into our firewall, but a lot more is done at the edge now for us, which allows us to improve security. We've got micro segmentation of traffic um, and the ability to control that. So you're now running EVPN, VXLAN, core distribution and access layer? Yeah, that's right, the IP clause design. So the, uh, the access layer piece is, I'm quite keen to, to, to learn a little bit more about that because we've seen adoption you know, throughout our customer base worldwide in terms of core and distribution, but actually taking that out to the access layer and gaining the benefits of micro segmentation. How are you benefiting from that? It's really important for us because it allows us to segmentate that traffic and cyber essentials, cyber insurance, universities are big targets these days of cyber risk. And for us to be able to control that traffic um, at, at the very edge where the device connects, uh, you know, keep our de secure devices there, 
students who just connect, we can just tunnel them straight out. But the internal traffic, the services inside, managing them directly from the edge to protect them is, is essential for us. And I know that many of the people that will be listening in and, and watching this today will be looking at how do we migrate from that legacy environment to, to that new environment? That's a, that's a scary thought to many. So how did you approach migration? So in terms of migration, as I say, we're in a, in a rolling refresh. We have our existing legacy core still in place. Mm -hmm. We have our new Juniper campus fabric in place, and we have a, a rooted link between the two, but then a direct connection from the fabric to our border firewall. Um, so it's been seamless for us, really. We were able to install them in our existing data center, and we brought building by building online. Wireless-wise, we can roll that out far more. There's no controllers anymore. Um, they're just cloud-based. Uh, we've got some missed edge devices um, to improve roaming within our fabric, but even devices we've got connected to our existing legacy network um, that we've replaced that are still using that capability, that fabric. Excellent. What about artificial intelligence? So this AI-driven operations, how are the people that are operating and running the network on a day-to-day -day basis, how are they benefiting from this new architecture and new capability? The architecture now is is fantastic because everything is it's not script-based, it's not CLI. We, we control everything via MIST, it's templates, We've got the capability of Marvis there, who's always sort of on the lookout on our network, advising us, maybe you should look at this. This is down, an AP is down there. An AP crashes, AI fixes it itself, it reboots the AP, it's back online with no interference from us. And that's really important because IT teams are, are shrinking these days, but we're expected to deliver more. So allowing the team to look proactively more than sort of always looking at problems uh, is great for us. And are you gaining benefit from having this single pane of glass where you've now got from a software defined cloud based architecture, complete visibility throughout the network? Yeah, I don't think ever we really had that single option, even though we were single vendor previously in legacy, there was no sort of one size fits all. It was it was tailored towards wireless, but wired was an add on to that. Mist mm -hmm. is very different. A single pane of glass is there. Everything is in one place. Um, it's great for us. We log in, you know, regularly. It's great. We've got wireless and wired in one place, and the analytics that are there between the two systems is is fantastic. Brilliant. Well, what about other subscriptions? Some of the emerging technologies, and where we're seeing a lot of service innovation around location services, and how we translate those location services to deliver value, where you can start to have a data driven approach to guiding strategies and yeah so that was again really important and for juniper for us an access point is an access point it does wireless that's great but the inbuilt vble technology in those access points and the location services as you say is is a great add-on and an, an additional selling point for us because we don't want to just do wireless anymore we want to have that uh, currently we kind of look at occupancy by walking around with a clipboard identifying sort of lecture theaters but it's it's very at that time it's very difficult. Students don't like getting up early in the morning. So if you look at a lecture at uh, nine o'clock in the morning, it will be half empty, but later on in the day, it'll be full. Mm. But if you just look at it once at that time, then you're just getting that, that snapshot in time um, there. With the location services now, we can set that up. It's something that we're definitely looking into that we're really excited that that technology can, can give us and that we can help other parts of the university. So we're seeing a real evolution of location services at the moment. So service accelerate or service innovation is, is being accelerated as people really start to drive in and see the benefits that some of these technologies can deliver. How do you see the benefits or what do you see as the benefits for students as you drive further into to some of these new technologies like location services? So I think students pay an awful lot of money to come to university these days and they expect the best and they've got so much choice out there. So for us, we need to offer the best and we need to have that situation for them. Um, a student, I think when they, they start their journey at university, they'll come to halls of residence. I think they prefer to have the Wi-Fi working than, than electricity. Um, I think, you know, they want to get those devices online and they want that halls of residence to be their home away from home and they want to get their games console, they want to get anything else online. And mm. I think this generation now are different from the, the previous. They, they won't have been used to having to plug anything in hardwired at home. Everything has to be 
wireless and everything has to just get online and work and, and this technology is helping us with that. When they move to our campus we may think they're going to congregate in a certain place but they may choose somewhere else and it'll depend on the weather and it'll depend on the seasons and having the analytics to look back on that see where they're gathering and saying well well actually we, we hadn't expected that there we've not put very much coverage we've not done something we need to feed that back and having that live data telling us on a regular basis and being able to go and proactively fix that before the students complain about it helps their journey and it helps us offer them the best experience. Excellent. And what about the anticipation around, you know, we're 12 months in, the NSS is, is quite a good gauge, a good barometer for, for student satisfaction, particularly around wireless services. NSS uh, a couple of years ago asked a specific question towards wireless and their experience there and I think it's one of the top looked at answers in NSS around technology so it is really key for us. I think our legacy network we scored quite well, we'd invested in it quite significantly previously in terms of the number of access points but it's that getting devices online so really key that we'll hit our new academic intake soon, we'll get the first full year of students using the technology and you know the results next year we will be really keen to see that they have improved yeah. and, and that's what I'm expecting because I think we are offering a better service with this technology than previously. Excellent and we've covered quite a broad range of, of subjects but you're on a digital journey and, and that journey, some things you will know that, that are in front of you and some things that, that you won't know about, you know, that they will hit you and you'll have to adapt. So the agility that comes with this platform obviously being really, really critical. Like you get your crystal ball out. Where do you see this in the next two or three years time? So the network still needs to be more than just the network now. It, it's not a, a platform to get people online and then other systems take over. It needs to deliver more you know, networks are not cheap anymore. The subscriptions are there, the capability is there, the integration with all other platforms allows us as an IT department to, to look at everything in one picture, identify, well, student records is being highly utilized. It's using a lot of the traffic. The network will be telling us that and it won't just be a server telling us it's slow. And that's what we need to get to, to improve our experience and what we're able to offer staff and students. Excellent. So it's been an interesting and, and, and fascinating, diverse conversation, covered a lot of ground, but I think the future is very much digital. And here at Juniper, we're delighted to be alongside you going on this journey. So Alex, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. And thank you, Jamie, for the day. And uh, you know, thank you for Juniper for joining us on this journey and supporting us so far.